Hey family, it's Regina. Welcome. This is your first time. Welcome back if you're a repeat guest. Glad to have you here. So in today's episode, I'm actually going to be showcasing 10 of my designer mainstream fragrances that I think are perfect to wear to the office. If that sounds like something you'd like to listen to, stick around because we're heading to work. No wine. So welcome. You know my story, or if you don't know my story, if you don't know my story, I started out with what I thought was 600, then 800. Probably I should have been more honest and counted better, but it's actually more probably close to a thousand bottles of fragrance that a year ago Spirit said I needed to declutter and I needed to do it on social media. So this is the second part of my journey where normally I declutter by note, but I do take these little tangents because I love all things fragrance. We're going to get started. First, I'm gonna start with a cheapie because this remains one of my all-time favorite reach fours, and that is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea. This honestly is a freshie. It is great to keep in the fridge, wear in the summer. It is an easy wear and has been around since 1996. Did you know that it was actually done by Francis Kirk Dijon? I know, shocking, but he did a wonderful job. This has, it's a freshie. There's lemon, maybe lime, maybe oranges, and then you have Get some floral. And then of course in the base, you know you're gonna get the green tea, which is what keeps it from being over the top. Nice spring day at the office, nice summer day at the office. I just wanna be re refreshing. Perfect scent for that. Another freshie for me is Daisy Marc Jacobs Oh So Fresh. Same reason why I love Elizabeth Arden's green tea. I love there's fruit at the top, absolutely. I smell red fruit. Then you get some florals. Honestly, kind of nondescript to me. Maybe some jasmine in there. And then it just sinks into just a really mild work scent. Nothing, again, nothing extraordinary, but just so nice. Just a really easy wear for the spring, summer days. In my earlier video, which I will link somewhere, I said, I'm an accountant. I'm a senior manager for my company. I don't want to wear a beast mode to the office. But otherwise, I like more... Oh, demure. Let's say demure comp scent that when they come in my office, they might be able to smell it. And I find these these fragrances are those. This is a oldie but goodie, almost as old as green tea in my collection. And this is Penhalgian's Gorgeous. This is an aromatic herbal freshy that honestly I could wear every day. It's an eau de cologne. But it's okay because I also buy, for this, for Corpus, I tend to buy the body lotion, shower gel. I do the whole thing, so I'm gonna wear this. I just wanna accent it everywhere I can. I just love that one so much. Now, did you know that this was done by Christian Provenzano? Definitely citrus, lime, bergamot, orange, jasmine. But the interesting thing about this one is in the base, it has oak moss. Huh, here's, here's a favorite that won't surprise anybody who's seen my other videos. Amo Ferragamo Perlet. This is a flower bomb, but a light summery flower bomb. You get some more of that raspberry again, which probably what makes me love it because I'm a huge raspberry and fragrance person. But then it doesn't stay that way. It, Osmanthus is in here. One of my notes that I tried a couple weeks ago, a months ago, that I now know I love. It settles right down into that nice, simple sandalwood base. That's what, that is what makes this so incredible. This one is Sea Fiore. And can we talk about why they discontinued this beautiful gem of a fragrance? Ooh, look at that sprayer. That was a good one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. This just starts out so incredibly sweet. The fruit just slaps you. But then it very quickly becomes orange blossomy, neroli. Maybe some rose in there. This is the fruit and the orange blossom that really just does this before this settled down into this vanilla and white musk. Now, this is probably a little harder to wear to the office. Oh, I do, don't you? Trust me, I do wear it. But it is because of that sweetness with the orange blossom, not as many sprays for this one. This one is Girl of Now, created by Dominique Ropion and Sophie Lab. I wanna make sure I recognize her as well. But of course, this was included in my Dominique Ropion grouping because he is my favorite perfumer. Love him. Love Ellie Saab. Love most of the Ellie Saab creations. Uh, various perfumers. It has a note of almond because it came out of my almond grouping. Starts out a little nuttiness, citrus, orange. Then you get, again, you get the almond. There's orange blossom, but a very, but not, it's not an overwhelming orange blossom, you guys. Just, this is just so easy to wear on a regular basis. And then you get into the almond, 
and the tonka in the bass. Oh, well, just another gorgeous one. Let's keep with the Ellie Saab, because this is Ellie Saab, Le Parfum, and White. Created by Francis Kirkjean. This is one of my favorites, because I love Ellie Saab. This should be another orange blossom dominant fragrance. You know me, orange blossom, raspberry, those are my, those are my heart. Orange blossom, red berries, but a little bit of bergamot to keep it from being overly sweet, I think. Now, of the grouping that this is in this collection, this is the only one that I chose to keep because this one, to me, being white, just is so light, so refreshing that yes, I can, I can wear this every day if I wanted to to work. You get some jasmine. And of course, you move into your base, which, which is all about some of that vanilla and possibly tonka. Just, oh, so. Carolina Herrera is good girl. This one has almond in it. I already know that. I love this. The Middle Eastern inspired by fragrant fragrance is Bint Haram. For those of you who don't want to spend the Carolina Herrera money, she's done by Quentin Beach and Louise Turner. Almond. And then you get some lemon. Keep that have the freshness at the top. And then you got orange blossom and orris. Mm. Keep the orris keeps it nice and powdery and soft. And then you go into, you get tonka bean and vanilla and sandalwood and amber. You have other stuff too, but those are, those are the four things that for me, yeah, it just sets me off. Those are my four favorite base notes right there. And this has it, let's break. <laughs> well, you know, I gotta get, I'm going, I gotta get ready for work. Easy, obviously you can always add something to it later if you're, if you're planning on going out. You can add something to all of these in terms of your layering combos and, and making it more intense if you're going out. Tiffany & Co. Rose Gold. It's one of my only, it's the only Tiffany fragrance that I have. As you would expect from Tiff, it is a classy fragrance. You're coming in with my fruit, my black currant right there, or raspberry. You're coming in with my, you're coming in with my, with my grape, my purple fruit. And then there's, I get a little rose, not a lot of rose though, but I get some rose. And the reason why this became popular with me is because it was in my Ambrette video. So there's ambre in the base. I, I said it in my other one when I was talking about the Middle Eastern fragrance. It's just so easy to wear, but these are mainstream fragrances. So you would hope that for the most part, they're going to be, they're going to appeal to the most number of people. They're not going to be, they're not going to be niche and trying to use all functified ingredients. These, and these 10 to me really represent fragrances. If I, I can spray any of these any day. Now, most of these I probably would not wear in the winter. So maybe when winter comes around, I'll do another 10 amber-based fragrances that I would tend to wear. The last one is Chloe. Are you surprised by that? Chloe Bean, classic, not only classic designer in terms of clothing and handbooks, pocketbooks and everything else that the brand puts out, but just in terms of this fragrance. Oh, lychee. I don't think I ever noticed that before. If it had more rose, I would say that it was very Delina-esque, but it's, but it's just, it's a sharp start, and then it becomes floral. And then you do get some rose. I don't get any sweetness, so I don't get any vanilla or fruit in here very much. Is lychee a fruit? I, I guess, I guess I do get fruit. Anyway, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Of the 10 that I put out, this is probably the hardest to wear because of that lychee. It's got a little, it's a little sour, just a touch. These are my 10 favorite designer mainstream fragrances to wear to the office. What do you think? What do you wear to the office if you work in an office? What do you wear where you do work? I know a lot of nurses, my niece, for example, is a nurse, and for her office, she tends to go with the much lighter fragrance like the Gucci Flores. So what do you guys wear? I'd love to know in the comments. Please share with me. Hope you're enjoying this. Hope you, I hope you got something out of this. I know I did. I know I, I realized how much I really do love these fragrances. Thank you for being here. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers.